welcome to Bosco Campus Vision. You are watching the campus television channel of Don Bosco College, Kuttiyam. This lecture is on the prescribed syllabus of 6th semester BA English Literature and Language. Paper is Women's Writing. This is part 4 of the lecture on the chapter Shakespeare and His Sister written by Virginia Woolf. Next, Virginia Woolf talks about Shakespeare's state of mind. What would have been his state of mind when he wrote King Lear and Antony and Cleopatra? It might be the most favorable one. We have no idea about it as Shakespeare himself never mentioned about this anywhere. It was by 19th century that the habit of describing their state of minds started in confessions and autobiographies. This started with Rousseau. Jean Jacques Rousseau was a Swiss-born French writer, philosopher and political theorist who was an influential figure of French Enlightenment. His biographical work Confessions written shortly before his death, describes his feelings of affinity with nature. Similarly, we don't know about the state of mind of Thomas Carlyle when he wrote his famous work French Revolution. What Flaubert went through when he wrote Madame Bovary and what John Keats went through when he wrote Poetry Against the Coming of Death and indifference of the world. Wolf says that from the modern literature of confessions and self-analysis, we can understand that to write a work of genius is almost a difficult accomplishment. There can be so many circumstances against the action of writing with concentration, like dogs bark, people interrupt, unhealthy conditions, scarcity of money, etc. So all the writers suffer every form of distractions and discouragements. Mighty poets in their misery dead. This line is from Wordsworth's poem, Resolution and Independence. Where he speaks about the untimely death of the great poets due to poverty or ill health. According to Wolf, for women, these difficulties are more formidable. Even up to the 19th century, for a woman to have a room of her own or a soundproof room is almost impossible unless her parents were extremely rich or very noble. Since the pin money or the money allowed for girls' dress or personal necessities, a trivial amount compared to the po pocket money given to the boys. A woman who aspires to be a writer is caught between contradictory and conflicting predicaments. The narrator believes this male discouragement accords with the masculine desire to retain the status of superiority. Unfortunately, Genius is often the most susceptible to the opinions of others. She believes the mind of the artist must be incandescent, that means shining brightly, like Shakespeare's, without any obstacles. She argues that the reason we know so little about Shakespeare's mind is because his Work filters out his personal grudges and spites and antipathies. His absence of personal protest makes his work free and unimpeded. Do the given exercise and submit on time. Thank you.